All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that thrilling story of whaling days and adventures among savages on a strange island. Johnny Robbins and Sue Grange, our young friends from the good ship Paul Parrot, along with Captain Dalton and old Peg Lake Dickon, and of course the ever-present Paul Parrot himself, have set out under cover of night for the camp of the Indians on this strange island off the coast of South America on which their ship has been wrecked. Ezra Grange and the rest of the crew will be along shortly after them, as soon as the men recover from the raid they've just gone through at the hands of the savages. But our four friends have set out in advance, because Misto, the magician who leads the Indians, has not only raided their camp on the beach, but kidnapped Annabelle Wilson, the young girl who was the fiancé of Captain Karsh, the privateer who was also wrecked with the Paul Parrot. Besides that, Briny, the hook-handed first mate of the privateer, has joined forces with Misto and carried off the Paul Parrot's diamonds during the raid. Our friends reach the Indian village, and just as they are watching Misto preparing one of his magic feats to impress the Indians, the magician is informed by one of his guards that both Karsh and Captain Dalton, whom Misto thought securely tied in one of his huts, are gone. The Indians are aroused, and when Paul Parrot gives away our friend's hiding place in the bushes by squawking, the Indians bear down on them, and Dickon is hit in the shoulder with an arrow. Johnny and Sue drag the weakened Dickon to safety, while Captain Dalton prepares to stand off the savages with his pistols as long as he can. <laughs> down. My guns are empty. I've got to reload these guns. Captain Dalton, Dickens fainted when I found his gun. Use his gun while I reload yours. Give me your bullet. I told you to stay behind those rocks, Johnny. They're almost on us. But, Captain, we've got to hold out as long as we can. Ah, you're right, lad. Here, here's the pistols and the bullets. I've got Dickens' gun now. We'll put a few more of them down before... I we... don't think you will, you blinking whaler. One more shot and I finish you all off. Oh, it's briny. He's crept up from behind us. Hi, my little canary. And I've got me gun on you. I I guess he's got us, Captain. Even if we do shoot at him, he can shoot Sue and Dickon before we can interfere. Hi, lad. It looks like we've got to give up the ship. We give in, Briny. But you just wait until our men... Go there, Johnny. He don't need to know that. Call off those yelling savages, Briny. You've got lots of nerve fighting off a whole tribe. I'll say that for you. Ahoy, Misto! I've got him! Good work, Rainy! Uga, pull the door! And uh, just who was responsible for our little interruption? Well, this is a windfall. Our recent guest, Captain Dalton, and three more. You pick your crew rather young, I see. Who are this boy and girl? I know them. It's the bloomin' cabin boy and that stuck-up sister of the ship's owner. The one we reefed up back on the beach. Don't you talk about Sue like that. Johnny, don't make him angry. It really doesn't matter. Look here, you heathen white man, whatever your bloomin' game is. This man here has been shot through the shoulder by an arrow. He seems to be badly hurt. And I warn you, if that was a poison arrow, your life won't be worth a clamshell. Well, listen to the threats from our bold Captain Dalton. If it will set your mind at ease, the arrow was not poisoned. If this scrawny, peg-legged old man has fainted, it's just because of loss of blood and his advanced age. But enough of this parlance. You are going to be my guest at the celebration I'm holding for my Indians. And without a doubt, I now truly have something to celebrate. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, you're not frightened, are you? Frightened? No, he can't do anything to us, Sue. He just wants to show us to the Indians to impress them just how smart he is. I'm glad he didn't separate us, Johnny and Sue. And it looks as if Dickens going to be all right. Avast, of course I'm going to be all right. You can't kill a hard shell old bollocker like me, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> but did you get that remark that swab misto passed about me? You mean when I told him you were hurt? Aye, Captain. If this scrawny, peg-legged old man has fainted, it's because of his advanced age. Scrawny, am I? I'll show the blinking landlubber. Easy there, Dickon, easy. Let's lay low and see what Misto has up his sleeve. Oh, Dickon, what happened to Paul Parrot? I haven't seen him since we were captured. Aye, lass, and after how he gave us away by his full squawk, and, 
I ain't so sure I ever wants to see him again, I ain't. But, Dickon, he didn't do it on purpose. After all, he's just a bird. He can't think like we do. Blow me down. Look. Misto's leading Miss Annabelle Wilson out before the fire. She looks a little frightened, but at least she hasn't been harmed. He's putting her in one of those big cages behind the council fire. And that awful black leopard is in the other. Listen, he's starting to speak. Butter. Hold up, hold it up. No, pull it up. Hold up, go on down. Now, briny old man, here is my famous trick. It still gives me the creeps. Blimey, it does. Nisto is throwing a black robe over each cage. He's walking to each one, and, and he's touching it lightly. Now he's waving his hands around. I, I think I know what's happening. Blow me down, it looks like a lot of heathen mumbo-jumbo to me. He's pulling the robes off the cages. Look! Avast! Miss Wilson and the leopard have changed cages. Batten down the edge. It's black magic it is. You see what an effect it has on them? They're mine, my slaves, ensnared by my magic. Now, in a few moments, we'll devise some ingenious tricks for our captives to participate in. Why don't you put Dalton in that cage and forget to change him when you change the leopard? <laughs> like you did that time back in Singapore. You are a bloodthirsty scoundrel, Briny, me lad. <laughs> that will all come in due time. I have it. I know how he does it. I can do it, too. Johnny, where are you going? Come back here, Johnny. As long as he didn't tie us up... But just put us here by the side of the fire. I'm going to show him up before those Indians. It's a dangerous trick, lad. But we'll back you up as well as we can if anything happens. Ah, oh, now, Briny. Well, what do you think you're doing walking boldly up to me, boy? I want to show you something. Give me those black robes. Blimey. What's the little monkey up to? Who knows? Let's see what idea he has in his crazy head. It may be amusing. Is, uh... He's taking the robes and throwing them over the cages, just like you did. Uh, and he's waving his hands around. Look, the brazen little fool, he's pushing the levers on the sides of the cages. He's found out how I worked the trick. Uh, he's pulling the robes off. So help me. The girl in the leopard has changed again. He's ruining me. If the Indians see that a child can do these feats of magic, they'll lose their respect for me. I must act quick. Uda, Uda, go, Uda, go. What's he doing? Pulling colored pieces of cloth out of the air. What can I do? The Indians are quieting down again. I know. I have a box of matches in my pocket. If Mr. O has been on this island for such a long time, he mustn't have any matches left. He won't be able to repeat this trick. I'll have to take my chance. Look! Rainy, look. The boy is lighting matches in his pocket and throwing them in the air. Have you got any matches? Help me. I ain't. Now what do we do? He's done it. He's done it, the little beggar. He's broken my charm over the Indians. They're tending on us. Avast, mighty. The blinking savages are heading for the others, too. They're after anybody they can see who's white. Ah, that gives us a stroke of luck. We'll slip off and let the others pay for this. Johnny, Johnny. Johnny, you've roused the Indians against Misto and Briny, all right, but it looks like they're coming for us, too. Blow me down. Now we are in for it. Ah! Ah! This way, mate. This way. Ah! Captain Dalton, there's Paul Parrott's voice coming from under the tree. That must mean... Look, Sue, it's Mr. Grange and the whole crew of the Paul Parrott. That blooming bird led them here to the camp. I takes back what I've been thinking about him. Throw down your arms and release your prisoners or we shoot. Curse the luck. It's the whole crew of the whaler in full strength. Even my Indians can't stand against all of them. You forget, they ain't your Indians no longer. I has it. Let the Paul Parrott crew attack the savages. While we duck through the jungle over to the camp of Captain Kosh's men on the other side of the island. With all them brawny seamen, we more than match Dalton's men. Briny, you're a gem. Wait till I free my leopard from the cage. No, no time. The fighting's begun. I don't think we should have left the fight. Well, Johnny, with Captain Dalton and my brother Ezra in command of all our men, you know... 
know they can win from those Indians and get Annabelle safely back again. But you know as well as I do that Mr. and that awful briny got away. I think you're right, Sue. It's up to us to find out where they went. Well, after all, they don't need us in that fight. We can't help them. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I know you could help fight Johnny. But wouldn't it be better if we found Briny? After all, he still has the diamonds. You're right, Sue. You're always thinking of the right things. Look, the moon's up. Yes, it's not hard to see in the forest at all. Sue, I know where we ought to look. Where? At the other side of the island at the camp of the privateer's men. That's where Briny would head. That's right, Johnny. Can you find the way? Sure I can. That's easy. Sue, look ahead there. Where? I don't see anything. Right between those trees in the moonlight. Oh, it looks like a big shadow. But it's moving. It's moving real slow right towards us. Oh, Johnny, what is it? I, I don't know. I hope... Sue, look. It has flaming eyes. Oh, Johnny. It can't be Mr. Black Leopard. No, the Black Leopard was inside the magician's cave. But whatever it is, it's creeping right at us. Oh. Now what's going to happen to our young friends? Just when it looked as if luck were turning their way with the whole crew of the Paul Parrot fighting the Indians and Misto and Briny turned out of their own camp, Johnny and Sue, all alone in the jungle at night, face to face with what? And no one near to help them. Johnny has no gun. What is going to become of them? Well, we'll just have to listen to the next transcribed episode in the cruise of the Paul Parrot to find out. Until then, this is your Paul Parrot announcer, Dave Ward, saying goodbye. <laughs>